Newton soldiers in Gabon said Wednesday they were seizing power in order to overturn the results of a presidential election, seeking to remove a president whose family has held power for 55 years. The coup attempt came hours after the Central African country's president Oli Bongo Ondimba, 64, was declared winner of an election marked by fears of violence. Within minutes of the announcement, gunfire was heard in the center of the capital, Libreville. A dozen uniformed soldiers appeared on state television later the same morning and announced that they had seized power. The situation in the capital wasn't immediately clear, and there was no word from the president. It wasn't immediately clear if airlines were operating in the country. The coup attempt came about one month after mutinous soldiers in Niger seized power from the democratically elected government and is the latest in a series of coups that have challenged governments with ties to France, the region's former colonizer. Unlike Niger and two other West African countries run by military junters, Gabon hasn't been racked by jihadi violence and had been seen as relatively stable. Gabon's coup would bring the number of coups in West and Central Africa to eight since 2020. In his annual Independence Day speech August 17, Bongo said, while our continent has been shaken in recent weeks by violent crises, rest assured that I will never allow you and our country Gabon to be hostages to attempt a destabilization ever. At a time when anti-France sentiment is spreading in many former colonies, the French-educated Bongo met President Emmanuel Macron in Paris in late June and shared photos of them shaking hands. France has some 400 troops in, in the country. French Prime Minister Elisabeth Bourne said Wednesday, we are following the situation in Gabon closely. The mutinous officers vow to respect Gabon's commitments to the national and international community. Gabon is a member of the OPEC oil cartel, with a production of some 181,000 barrels of crude a day, but its over 2 million people face high unemployment and rising prices. Nearly 40% of Gabonese ages 15 to 24 were out of work in 2020, according to the World Bank. Several French companies said they were suspending operations and moving to ensure the safety of their staff, and a man who answered the phone at the airport said flights were cancelled Wednesday. A second statement by the coup leaders, who came from the gendarme, the Republican Guard and other elements of the security forces, said the president was under house arrest in his residence, surrounded by family and doctors. People around him have been arrested for high betrayal of state institutions, Massive embezzlement of public funds, international financial embezzlement, said the military, among other charges. Several members of the Bongo family are under investigation in France, and some have been given preliminary charges of embezzlement, money laundering, and other forms of corruption, according to French media reports. At a time when anti France sentiment is spreading in many former colonies, the mutinous officers vowed to respect Gabon's commitments to the national and international community. France has 400 soldiers in Gabon leading a regional military training operation. They've not changed their normal operations today, according to the French military. Bongo has served two terms since coming to power in 2009 after the death of his father, who ruled the country for 41 years. Another group of mutinous soldiers attempted a coup in January 2019, while Bongo was in Morocco recovering from a stroke, but was quickly overpowered. Bongo faced an opposition coalition led by economics professor and former education minister Albert Ondo Osa, whose surprise nomination came a week before the vote. Reached Wednesday, Osa said he wasn't ready to comment on the attempted coup and was waiting for the situation to evolve. After the vote, the Central African Nations Communications Minister, Rodrigue Mumba Bissou, announced a nightly curfew from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m and said internet access was being restricted indefinitely to quell disinformation and calls for violence.